Hi, Bokuga here. So recently, my dad bought an Insta360 1R camera. It's an awesome camera that can film in Super 5.7K 360 video and comes with a bunch of cool features that make it really fun to film with. But most importantly, this camera shows how far 360 panoramic video has come. My dad has worked on virtual tours and created panoramic photos in the past, and stitching together just a simple 360 photo was really labor intensive and expensive. He needed to buy all the right equipment, purchase the right software, and have all the knowledge to stitch together these photos by himself. It took forever, and it was just for one picture. But now, with the Insta 361R, all you need to do is film using the dual lens drag the files into Insta360 Studio, which is free, and the program automatically stitches the footage together seamlessly. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the basic features of Insta360 Studio so you can make a video like this. So if you haven't already, make sure to download and install Insta360 Studio from the Insta360 website. Once you've done that, open up the program and begin importing your files. You can import your files by either dragging your footage into the program here, or clicking on the button and searching for it. Go to the folder where you saved your 1Rs INSV files. When you film in 5.7K, there are two files for each 360 video. One is for the front lens, and one is for the back lens, so never split these files up. When you import one or both of the INSV files into Insta360 Studio, the software will automatically stitch the front and back footage together into a single 360 video. To turn your 360 video into a 2D video, You'll want to switch over to the free capture mode. This will let you edit your footage to your liking. The first thing you need to do is pick an aspect ratio for your video. Make sure you pick the correct aspect ratio for the type of video you want to release. Since I'm going to be putting this video on YouTube, I will stick with the 16x9 aspect ratio. Click here to zoom out the timeline so that you can see the entire video clip. The next step is to trim your video to its desired length. This yellow box is your video clip. You can drag the front and back ends of the video around to trim it shorter or to increase the length. The footage I have is around 37 seconds long and I want to start the video 8 seconds into this clip. I will drag the starting point just before 8 seconds and then I will drag the end point to just after 35 seconds. Now the duration of this clip is roughly 27 seconds long, and it is ready to be edited. The next step is to add keyframes to animate your video. A keyframe is basically a way to tell the software, this is what I want my video to look like at this point in time. Drag the gray line towards the beginning of your video. Hit the keyframe button to create a keyframe. When you create a keyframe, it will present you with a bunch of options. The first option is Timestamp. Here you can jump to a precise minute and second of your video. The pan angle turns your video left and right. The tilt angle makes your video go up and down. The roll angle changes the horizontal angle of the video. The field of view zooms in and out and distance changes the look of the video from a sphere to a 2D flat video. The program comes with presets. Here, you can jump to a fisheye view and it will automatically configure these settings for you. Click here for a tiny planet view, a sphere view, or a regular 2D camera view. Another option you have is to use your mouse to drag and adjust the video. 
You don't have to use the options on the side, but they let you be more precise. For the first keyframe, I want to start the video from the Tiny Planet view. I will click on the Tiny Planet preset and adjust the video using the options on the side. I'm going to zoom out using the FOV to keep all the Tiny Planet in shot. To make the shot a little more interesting, I'm going to zoom in while rotating the shot. I will move the gray line to the 13 second mark and add a keyframe. I will tidy up the timestamp to make sure it is exactly at 13 seconds. I am going to use the pan angle to rotate the shot so Joshua is near the top of the planet and I am going to decrease the FOV so the shot is more zoomed in. The next shot, I want to be on the ground with a fisheye effect. So I'm going to create a keyframe at 14 seconds and select the fisheye preset. To make it spin like it did in the video, I'm going to set the pan angle at negative 350 degrees. This is also so Josh will be close to the center of the frame. We're going to track him running around the camera. So we're going to put a keyframe at 20 seconds and spin the camera to negative 355 degrees. At 21 seconds, I'm going to add another keyframe to zoom out into a tiny planet shot. I want him to appear to be running on the top of the planet and making it rotate. So we are going to create another keyframe at 34 seconds while zooming out and panning the shot once again. Before you export your video, watch over it entirely and make sure it looks the way you want it to. After making sure your footage is to your liking, you are now ready to export your video. Click the export button at the top right, or you have the option to also click file and you'll also find another export option there. Save any changes to your footage before exporting. The resolution 1920 by 1080 is fine for YouTube. and You can leave the bit rate at 18. Choose a file name and a file folder to save your video in. Then click OK to start exporting. Once you have finished exporting your video, you can now share it on social media or you can continue editing your video in your favorite video editor such as Adobe Premiere. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.